Hello and Merry Christmas. Um, welcome myself back to my channel. <laughs> it's been a while. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've been under the weather. But I am doing much better now. I, uh, but excuse my voice if it sounds like there's a froggy situation going on. Um, but praise God for good health, long life, and strength and joy. Hallelujah. So anyway, as we end 2021 and we prepare to go into a new year, 2022, um, I am very excited to share with you that I have made it. Hallelujah. I have made it <coughs> to my one year lock anniversary. I started my micro locks. I actually started twisting my micro locks. I'm going to actually split this screen and start putting pictures of my journey as I'm talking. But I um, started twisting um, my micro locks Thanksgiving of the year 2020. So the end of November and I finished, uh, it took at least a week. Not that I have that much hair or that my hair was that long. I just wasn't on any, I didn't have anywhere to be, you know, I just, I wasn't about to just sit and twist my hair f for a few hours straight. So several days later, about a week later, I finished, um, December 3rd, I interlocked all the twists that I put in my head. And so that is the date that I used for my lock anniversary. So how has it been? Wonderful. Don't get me wrong. I've had some challenges and I will talk about those today, but Overall, it's definitely been a lifestyle change. I was, um, one of my friends called me the weave queen. And what she meant by that, I mean, I assume what she meant by that, is that I just wore a lot of weave. Like, you barely saw Dana's hair. You saw wigs, wigs, wigs. Not even, like, the expensive human hair wigs. You saw cheap synthetic wigs. <laughs> or some kind of, like, human hair blend type of wig on my head all the time. And uh, then I eventually got away from, from wigs and started doing protective styles. And so I would do a lot of crochet, twists, braids, um, things like that. And uh, <clears throat> long story short, I eventually decided I was going to lock my hair, which is quite the story. I, I probably should do a video on that, like a standalone video about why I decided to lock my hair. If you're interested in that, hit the like button. And if you're still watching by now, hit the like button. And um, I'll see what I can do. So yeah, um, how has it been? Uh, right now, let's see, today is Christmas. It's December 25th. Since I've been under the weather, I don't, my family's not coming to my home as planned. And so I'm chilling at the house by myself on Christmas day. But, Thank God for life, health, and strength. I'm actually feeling so much better today. So um, I figured I would get on here and talk to you guys since this video is long overdue. Um, December 3rd is uh, the actual lock anniversary. So I am one year and two to three weeks into my journey. Have I had any disappointments? Let me just get this out the way. I, I wouldn't say that I'm disappointed by the length of my hair, but in one year, y'all, I thought it was going to be longer than when I started, but it's not. It's like, um, this is like a fresh braid out and my hair is up in a puff type of situation. But I think I got one hanging out here. I thought after a year, I mean, some people's videos, they got length, they got inches. But I started my hair on stretched. I started my locks on stretched hair. And so my hair, and my hair is so super tightly coiled, and my hair began to shrink and shrink and shrink and swell, which I needed it to swell because it was looking like tinsel on my hair. <laughs> it was kind of looking like Christmas tinsel or something, like black Christmas tinsel. But anyway, it's definitely thickened up, and I'm grateful. But it is um, not, I didn't realize as much length as I had hoped. And so if there were a disappointment, that would be it. The only other thing that is somewhat of a negative is the, um, my hair, I experienced a lot of bunching. And so the ends of my locks, like the one that's hanging out here is fine. It's the size that I intended them to be and it doesn't have any bunching. You don't even see like, but it's a lock, but you don't see unevenness. But most of my locks have like a fat, I'm gonna take my hair down. I'm gonna take you guys in the restroom and take my hair down. 
and show you what I'm talking about and just show you what my hair is looking like when it's down. But, um, yeah, I, my ends are fat, a lot of them. And that makes it challenging when I get ready to do a, um, like, I guess this is somewhat of an example. It's not really that fat compared to some of them, but there is a, a lump here. I don't think that's budding. I think it's from where I let my hair bunch up when I had these crazy ideas about, I don't know, somewhere along my six month. Yeah, there's one. You see this lock? It's got a, a fat bump right there, and then it's got another one. But some of them, the ends are just fat, fat. And so it makes interlocking challenging because you're trying to squeeze this fat in through this small root. And so I don't know if I can fix that. I don't know how to fix that. I'll do some research, but I don't know if it's like I waited too late. But anyway, so those are the two challenges. All right, we're about six minutes in on this video. So uh, if there were negatives, that's what those those are it. Um, one other challenge is, um, which I don't know, I think maybe that was a phase. I can't say I've noticed it as much lately, but for a while, sometime after, sometime between the six month and probably the 11th month mark, I was noticing loose hair at my scalp, like, like pat, almost patches of hair, mostly in the back or toward the top. And I would just be like, where is this hair coming from? Like, it would be so much hair out of a lock that it would, it would seem like a lock fell off. Now I have not, praise God, I have not lost any locks in my one year. Excuse me, none fell out, none broke off. Thank God for that. I have a couple double head dragons that I chose to cut one of the heads off, but I haven't lost any locks. I know a lot of people have experienced that. And that's partly why I didn't make my locks as, you know, very, very small because I was trying to avoid my hair just falling out. So I have about 250. 40-ish locks, might be 242, 243. I should recount and I will sometime in my second year. But um, I haven't lost any locks. Oh Lord, what was I talking about? But, oh Lord, I forgot, I forgot what I was talking about. I haven't lost any locks, but anyway. But it would seem like I lost a lock because I would have like patches of hair out of the lock. And so I would just wrap them around the lock and interlock and call it a day. So that was a challenge, but like I say, lately I haven't been noticing that. So I guess that was like a phase. Other than that, um, some differences, when my locks were pretty new, we're talking the first um, three to four months while they were still um, in the process of swelling, so they were still kind of skinny. I, they would curl very, <clears throat> excuse me, very easily. My locks would curl without water. They would curl just by spritzing them with water. And I would have like tight everlasting curls, like curls that wouldn't come out unless I intentionally like did something to knock the curls out, like soaked them in water or something. But um, I noticed as they've gotten more mature and as, they, as they've fattened up, which I think they're as fat as they're going to get now, but it seems like they don't curl as easily. And I thought from watching other people's videos, and no, I don't compare myself with other people, but I do learn from other people's videos. I thought maybe what was gonna happen is lo the locks would be more challenging to curl as they got longer. But my hair really hasn't you know, gotten much longer than when I started, but they have gotten fatter and more mature. So I'm not sure what it is. I think maybe it's the fatness. But I can't just put my hair in bantu knots and expect everlasting curls like I used to get. Now, it might be that I just need to do very, very small bantu knots, but I haven't been willing to take the time to do that. Same with perm rods. Um, I get a good curl from perm rods, but I think I need to buy more perm rods and just put like just two locks, two to three locks on one perm rod instead of trying to do like four and five. Um, because I don't want to use setting lotion and, and stuff like that. Like right now, I'm still not really using products in my hair. I stopped using leave-in conditioner. I might return to that. But um, I just put water and oil in my hair, and that's it. I still haven't tried rose water either. I need to get to Whole Foods. But 
Let's see, what else is going on on this journey? Uh, styling is, is very easy, but I will say this. Some people say that their hair is like, you know, get up and go and they show you their morning routine where they take off their bonnet and they shake their hair and they're good to go. I do have bad hair days oh, <laughs> still with locks. Now, it's different than when I have loose natural hair. I mean, you know, it's a little easier to get it together. But generally, I have to do prepping like the night before and stuff like that if I feel like I'm just going to have an easy morning of get up and go. I think part of that, though, is what I talked about with my locks being um, having some fatness on the ends and stuff like that. I usually prefer to wear my hair in a, a braid out. If it's not going to be a braid out, then it's, I have some style in mind. But I'm not yet willing to just wear straight locks. And it's because of what they look like with all of the lumps and the bump. They're, they're pretty lumpy with all the bunching that I experienced. I think it was my six-month video where I got a revelation that I was going to fatten up my locks by not stretching them. And I wasn't really braiding and banding much except the front. Like, I was premature. I, I jumped the gun, and I have quite a bit of bunching as a result of that. So if you're new and you're learning, I will tell you, don't jump the gun. Braid and band or twist and band, um, you know, whatever you got to do during wash day, and at least until you're a year in. Like, don't be premature. Like, my the back of my hair was locking so early. I just got excited and I jumped the gun. And like I said, as a result of that, I do have quite a bit of bunching. So beware. Yeah, though, but it, it's great. Um, I'm looking forward to my goals. If I've run out of pictures for my journey now, I'm going to put in some pictures of what my goals are. Um, and you're going to see waist length, booty length type of sister locks and micro locks. But that's the goal. Uh, and that's where I want to be in three years. Three years into my journey, I need to have, my locks need to be past my bra strap, reaching toward my waist. And I'm five foot nine. That's just how I feel about it. <laughs> we'll see. Y'all stay tuned. But I think what I've, I've noticed in a lot of people's videos, and, rem and mind you, I have type 4B hair, so it, that makes a difference. Um, the, I think the kinkier and the more coarse one's texture, you know, the easier, the quicker and less effort you have to put into your lock journey. But, you know, if you have looser curls, like I don't have, if you have, like, type 3 hair, that's more challenging. But anyway, um, what was I talking about? <laughs> I got the mind of Christ. I was talking about something. Y'all know. If I could rewind this video, I would, but it'll come to me. Anyway, um, this journey has been great. Um, oh, what I've noticed, this is what I was talking about. Uh, most people in their first year, their hair either gets shorter or they'll gain like a couple of inches because it was mostly shrinking and uh, swelling as it began to lock. In the second year, you notice a good drop. And then in the third year is when you notice some serious length. And so that's kind of why I set my sights or set my heart on three years. But um, yeah, so I'm going to stop talking now and uh, take you guys to the restroom and take my little puff down and show y'all how my hair looks now but thank you for staying tuned to my journey i intend i, I wanted to do vlogmas y'all and i just i didn't pick the camera up i mean i did the first day i decorated my tree and created my little garland and some of the diy christmas stuff i was doing i filmed it but i didn't edit it and i'm about to delete that footage to make space on my phone <laughs> But I will, I said all that to say, I, I have content coming forth. So stay tuned and, and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. If you watch my videos, please hit the like button. It doesn't mean that you love the content every time or you can't hit the like button. It just means I want to support Dana. Oh, my soup is ready. I got to go. But if you want to support me and my channel, hit the thumbs up button. Uh, that helps me with the algorithm. And if you want to see more of my journey, then stay tuned and subscribe. Turn on your notifications. All right, let's go to the restroom and check out my hair. Thanks for watching.